Okay. All right, well, first, when I, let's see, before I really get into it, I want to know who I'm talking to. So I just want to know who is from a church of 500 or more. Is there people in here? Lots of you, okay. Awesome, and then 500 or less, is that the rest of you guys? Okay. Um, I'm gonna share kind of my process and tryouts. It, hang on with me, because it might not be super relevant to you right now, but I'm going to talk about smaller churches as well. All right, so every year, this is my least favorite time of the year because I, am, I have a pastoral heart. I love people and I want everybody to be successful. And so telling somebody that they can't do something that they have dreamed about doing their entire lives is really difficult. I know probably none of you in here really enjoy that either. How many of you are in charge of the worship department? Okay, quite a few of you, great. Um, okay, so. We have tryouts every year. There's about 700, 700, 650 people that do second year. There's about 1,200 people right now that do first year. So that tryout looks completely different than mine. Joanna is, she's probably one of the most organized people that I know. She's in charge of uh, first year worship and she has everybody, if you wanna be a worship leader, you submit a video, okay? So you're submitting a video probably a month before school starts and then she narrows it down to her top 20, and then you try out. And then she gets her top eight out of that, and then you lead worship, okay? And that's the same, same goes pretty much for every member of the band, the bass, the electric guitar, the violins, everything is, goes through uh, video prior, just because, hey, you have 1,200 people in the school, you probably are gonna have maybe between, I'm gonna say, 300 and 500 people that would want to try out, okay? Just the way that it is. So in my year, second year, we have about six, 650, I'd say, which means that I'm probably gonna have about 200 people total for tryouts. And I thought about last year, I thought about narrowing it down. Like, you know what, why don't I just do what Joanna does? I'll just say, send me a video and I'll look through it and we'll, we'll figure this out. But God spoke to me, oh. yeah. Um, it wasn't anything super profound, but he was just saying like, hey, I really want you until you reach a thousand people just to keep it open for everybody. I'm like, all right, well, that means about eight hours more of my time. That's cool, but that's fine. And so I just keep it open for everybody. Um, I send out an email and say, hey, just send me your, your name, what you want to try out for, and show up at these times. You know, we give all the details in the email, what songs to practice. Everybody practices the same four songs, whether you're electric guitar or you're a worship leader. And you come, worship leader tryouts are about four hours long. Last year, I had 75 people try out, and I can only pick eight, okay? So I have 75 people trying out just for worship leader. So you can imagine that's that takes a long time, even if I give everybody like 30 seconds, which is usually what, it, what happens. We have a band up there ready, ready to play the song in whatever key you wanna play it in, you wanna sing it in, so the worship leader gets up, and they just, hey, can you start from the chorus? Sure, and they start going, and, and they start singing. And within 30 seconds, you have, you have 30 seconds to decide if this person is right or wrong for, to lead the 650 students that are coming to your school. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure at all. And um, what I wanna talk to you about is, so how do you do that? Okay, so whether or not you're a small, small church or you're a big church, like how do you choose the right people? And I can tell you, I've done this for about six years, almost six years now. This will be my sixth year, going to my sixth year. Um, when I was actually in second year, my amazing boss, Gabe Valenzuela, made me judge my peers, okay? So he's like, hey, I know you're in second year, but you're gonna pick the second year worship teams anyway. <laughs> Okay, let's just start it off on a really hard foot. And I say this because some of you guys are actually gonna have to be in a position where you do that. You're gonna judge your peers, okay? And there's a really, really kind and gentle way of doing that. And we wanna maintain relationship. And at the same time, we really want good worship in our churches. 
Yes, it's just the way we're gonna do it. Um, the day, the year that I did that, my my best friend did great. She did awesome. I was so happy. She was trying out. I'm like, oh yes, my best friend did great. She's gonna be worship leader. And then her boyfriend tried out, and uh, he has an incredible voice, incredible voice. But at the time. I can't speak for him now, this was like five years ago. At the time, it was like not quite ready to lead a group of you know, 300 people. Well, that's hard, that's rough, man. Hey, sorry about that, you're probably gonna be in my life forever, but you're not gonna be leading worship this year, maybe next year. <laughs> that's hard. All right, so there are a lot of great voices in the world, okay? Uh, good voices are about a dime a dozen. That's right, okay? So what makes somebody stand out? These are the things that make somebody stand out to me, okay? I can't really speak for, for you guys. You guys are gonna have kind of your own individual thing as well. Um, I look for somebody to engage the entire room. So we're in a room, there's probably about 300 people in the room. Man, maybe more like 200. And I look for somebody to engage the entire room. Because if you can't engage a room of 200 people, you're probably not gonna engage a room of 500 or 600, okay? So I usually start out the tryout by having my head down. And not, nothing against you know, anybody else, but I just start out by having my head down. And this is why, it's because if somebody can start leading worship and make me look up, like, that's a, that's a really big deal, okay? Somebody can, you, I'm sharing all my secrets right now. Hope none of you do it here. Um, so I, I look up and they have grabbed my attention it's because they have a level of influence on their life that is recognizable, okay? So you're looking for somebody with influence on their life. You're obviously, you're looking for a good voice, but you're looking for somebody who engaged the trial room, make you look up, you wanna feel the anointing when they start singing, okay? Obviously, we can get a little spiritual and less practical right now. But you wanna feel the anointing because like, you're looking for people to not manipulate an emotional response out of your church, but you're looking for people to facilitate an experience with the Holy Spirit, all right? So you're gonna to want to have people that you, you almost get goosebumps when they start singing. You know, you're like, woo, it's great, yes. And um, so that's one thing that I really, really value. And sometimes they're not the best singer. Sometimes somebody else just blew it up with their voice. And I didn't feel the anointing, <laughs> I didn't feel the presence of God, but somebody else gets up there with their little baby voice, little baby voice. And you feel, oh my gosh, there's something on this girl's life. Like, there's something on this guy's life. Okay, so you have to really recognize that. All right. Just snorted, sorry. <laughs> Super excited to be here. Um, all right, so another thing is that you wanna, you want, <laughs> you want somebody, oh, dang it. Okay. You want somebody who exudes confidence. And this is what I mean, everybody's gonna be a level of, there's gonna be a level of anxiety in the room, right? Because people are trying out especially if you're not filtering it. Some of these people have no experience whatsoever, okay? They're just like, God told me to come here because I'm gonna have breakthrough, the most breakthrough I've ever had in my entire life, you know? So you're feeling all this anxiety in the room. And so, but when somebody gets up there that has the gift and call of a worship leader in their life and they know it, okay? You're gonna experience a level of confidence being exuded from them. They're gonna be anxious. Like, there's a difference between um, being anxious and then being like so nervous and mortified. There's a difference there, okay? So I used to run cross country and track and every time we like start at the starting line and you'd be like pumped, like, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. You know, so that's, that's um, being kind of anxious. You want it to start, you're full of anticipation, you know? Okay, I think I beat that one to death. You get the idea, right? Okay, let's see. I want you to also, like, how many of you feel like you're, you have a pastoral gift? Some of you. It's okay if you don't. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you have pastoral gifts, sometimes discernment and empathy 
are really strong in your in your heart. So you can put people put yourself in people's shoes, as well as really have a sometimes a weird discernment of where they're at, almost spiritually. Okay. So for those of you that aren't necessarily um, pastoral, maybe you're prophetic. You can. I, would, I open up that gifting, okay? So I'm highly, highly empathetic, which makes this a really, really long day for me, okay? So I just open it up, like, you know what? I just, I need to do this. This is for the sake of 700 students. I'm just gonna open it myself up to Holy Spirit, whatever he wants to tell me, whatever I'm feeling from these people, I'm just gonna let it, let it all hang out right now. And uh, sometimes you'll feel stuff that doesn't necessarily feel good when somebody sings. Um, you don't want to, obviously, we're not Simon Cowell. We don't embarrass people. We're not like, oh, yeah, that was awful. And uh, clean up your stuff right now in front of everybody. You know, that's not what we do. <laughs> but you're, gonna, you're probably going to feel stuff like that. Okay, just make a note of it and move on and ask God about it. All right, let's see. Okay, and this goes... This is something that I have, I have a little bit of pet peeve with probationary periods because I don't think that they should ever exist. Talk about it, Talk about it William. Um, this is why, because I feel like if you accept somebody, if you're like, you're on the team, okay, you are on the team, you're on the team. And then you're like, but, but you have a month where you almost have to like prove yourself to us that you're worthy of being on the team. Okay, when worship leaders, this is a really bad idea, okay? Because this creates performance. Even in your most humble-hearted worship leader, okay, this is gonna create performance. This is gonna create like anxiety in their hearts, even if like they've been leading worship for years, okay? So if you are going to accept somebody on your team, you accept them and you take responsibility for them, okay? So this, is, this has kicked me in the butt over the years. All right, like I've, I've made, I didn't have to say I've made wrong choices. I have, my boss is nodding back there. I've made some wrong choices. Luckily it was more earlier on. I've made some really right choices though too. Like Hunter Thompson, yeah. should I name a few? Matt Stinton, well that was easy. Um, Stephanie Frizzell. Gret Singer. No, I had nothing to do with her. Um, yeah, but you have to, you have to really trust, trust what God's placed inside of you, okay? So you trust your discernment, you make a choice, you stick with it, and if they end up, you know, they, they're up here and they're leading and they're, they're like showing off some, some serious vocal run stuff that's so distracting, and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm gonna get fired, I'm gonna get fired. Okay, well, probably not going to get fired. Hopefully you have a really great boss like I do, but you have to exercise what Matt was talking about, brave communication, okay? You're a worship pastor. There's no way around it. As much as I have tried to, you know, when I, when I post the people that make it on the worship teams, I run out into the hallway, make sure nobody's looking, slap it on there, and then I run back in the room because I don't want, I don't want, that is not, I don't want to confront anybody. <laughs> but, you know, the, there really is no way around it. There's no way around it. Um, just this past year, I had, I had this bass player, and he is amazing. He's one of the most amazing guys. And uh, everybody loves this, this guy. I won't say his name. But he had some really bad sets, okay? And how many of you guys know that when the bass is bad, oh, it's bad. When the bass is good, nobody even knows it's there. <laughs> but, but when it's bad, man, it is bad. And so I had to, Gabe's like, fix it. My boss, fix it, fix it. I'm like, okay. I go and I, I have to tell him, like, hey, man, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Okay, can you help me understand why your tryout was this way, but that's not what I'm seeing on stage right now? And he's like, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I'm like, do you like playing bass? Do you enjoy it? Are you in, embarrassed to be up there? <laughs> and I didn't do it super like wonderful and fluffy and kind like, but um, I just wanted to get to the root of it. 
okay, so why aren't, are you not practicing? And he, we, got, we came to the conclusion that he just wasn't practicing. You know, people would send him songs and he's like, I just waited till last minute to check it, you know. And then he straightened up, he got his stuff together and he's, I think he was one of the best tone. I think when he was on it, he was on it, okay? So you don't abandon people. No probationary periods. You just take the extra effort and you pour into people. That is, even if you're prophetic, even if you are not pastoral, sometimes we just got to do things that we're not wired for, right? So let's just do it. Let's just do it. I think I have, I have eight minutes left. Um, so I want to be, be as relevant to you guys as possible. So I want to, if you guys have questions partic- like pertaining to your church, we have eight minutes, okay? So they have to be quick. But if you could line up right here, they're gonna have a mic for you. So if, you, if you're from smaller churches, I didn't address the stuff that you're like burning on your heart. I wanna quickly answer those questions, okay? So come line up right here. Josh has a mic. What about feeling pressure from those in authority over you? Mm-hmm. If you have a limited number of people that you feel like, yes, character and musical excellence is totally. there, but it's not the full band sound. Mm-hmm. It's like only enough for like acoustic or, you know, but the pastors want that yeah. Bethel sound, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. No, I, I understand. I came from a really small church. Um, well, the thing is, is that you can't magically create a drummer you know, you can't just poof, I have a drummer, or I, you know, and if um, hopefully the leadership over you is reasonable enough to understand that you just can't create something out of thin air, um, it really boils down to this. another thing Matt was talking about is communication it is like your, your, your pastor who's over you is like, I really want Bethel, Bethel sound. And you're like, hey, I know this drummer that he lives like two hours away but we'd have to cover his gas to get here on Sunday. But I can promise you that it would sound way more like that. You know, so if they're willing to pour resources into that, I'm not, then that's great. But if they're not, then they have to, in a, an appealing daughter to a father sort of way, they just have to understand that we can't just make something happen with nothing. You know, we have, we have little Johnny who's, you know, 10 and he's really practicing the drums, but he's still about two years out from really making it happen, you know? It's just so, just make, just be communicative and uh, don't leave anything imagination, you know? Hey. Hello. Hey. Um, how do you, if you think that your worship team leader is not really doing his job as far as like, so for example, there's this guy on the team, mm-hmm. he's always at the bar getting drunk, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, he comes in he hadn't reviewed the songs, but he's a violinist, so he doesn't really have to. He just kind of puts that cherry on top and then he's good and it sounds great either way. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, how do you, it's not my place to tell him, hey, you shouldn't do this, mm-hmm. but how do you address that with the leader in a, an appropriate way? Um. Well, talking to any leaders, you always want to come at it kind of like an appeal, not a demand, you know? So it really is, you position your heart correctly when you're talking to leaders. So you're like, hey, this is something that's really, really making me feel weird and it's hurting me. And so you tell, talk to them about how it's affecting you because that's all you really know, you know? So you're telling them, hey, this is how it's affecting me do we have any core values or anything in place to change this? You know, because if hopefully there's something in place that could encourage your leader to talk to this person and ask them to change what they're doing. And if, and hopefully if, hopefully with your support, you can, you know, either help, help that person change or move them on. You know, because I'm thinking that that guy like loves playing violin, but maybe he doesn't love playing violin for church. So maybe there's a, a time and a place for him to move on in a really honoring way. But appeal to your leader. That would be what I'd say. So this is more of a pastoral question. Yeah. Um, so basically I'm newly in charge. My husband and I are newly in charge of a team that was already formed. Yeah. And the previous leadership is still there, but mm-hmm. now we're kind of 
over them. <laughs> so, and there's a little bit of backlash. So I, totally. um, I'm kind of wondering how to navigate that whole situation. Totally. That's not super fun. Yeah, yeah I get it. Um, okay. So when I was 17 years old, I was put in a position of associate worship pastor. And I was... I inherited these people that were probably about 20, 30 years older than me. Okay, so that's also pretty awkward, right? And some of the, some of the guys were like totally on board. They're just serve, like huge servant hearts. And then there were some people that were like not having it. Like they thought my job should be their job. And uh, so what I had to do, obviously I'm an associate. So when my leader, I went to my leader, which might be your pastor. So you're going to need leadership support if you need to change anything, okay? It's because they've been here a lot longer than you have. You're just going to want them to have your back and to be in agreement with you. All right, and, send, and then like say the guitar player isn't doing his job or he just comes late all the time, but he's been there for like 30 years, you know? He's been there for, and I just come whenever I want because I've been here forever, you know? So... You, you, bold, you, you have to recognize your position as well and you know, boldly confront it in a really, in an honoring way, obviously, but you, have, you can't apologize for the position you've been given, okay? So don't ever apologize for it. Just say like, hey, I've been given this position. I, this, is, this is the standard to which we're looking to go. Like this is the direction we're looking to go. We need you to come and join us. You know, is that something you can do? And if not, if it's their choice, no, I can't do that. Okay. And then go to your pastor, say that this is their choice. This is the choice they made, and maybe it's time to move on out. You know, does that answer your question? Or yeah, just don't apologize for your position. Like, don't don't like, oh, I'm gonna walk on all these eggshells for you. you know? Okay. All right. I have probably one more. Hi. Um, how do you approach leadership when there are contrasting views as to what kind of worship style mm -hmm. there should be? For your it's a congregation. Good question. How many people have that question? Okay. Um, I've seen it done really, really wrong. Okay. So the wrong way of doing that is to just be like, well, I'm a worship leader. I'm just going to sing whatever I want to sing. And they all have to deal with it. That's a really wrong way. Okay. The only way to... Jesus, Jesus made just the most beautiful model of this. The only way to confront a religious system is through humility, okay? It's the only way you're gonna be victorious is through a humble heart. And so if you want to change the way that worship is done, I would be prepared for people to not be super stoked about it. Okay, especially in your local church, there's people that have been there for years and we've done it the same way for years. Sometimes it's really hard for people to change. But there is a way to more ease them into it instead of like, all right, seven new songs on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Boom, you know? And you can't, we don't even do that at Bethel. You know, we're not, we're maybe one song, one new song on a Sunday morning. Maybe two, if we're crazy, you know? So just ease them into it. Like if, you've, if your church has always sung hymns, then you're singing, you sing four hymns, and then you ease like a soft little Rita Springer song in there, okay? <laughs> like, let's not, let's not go for like United, you know, United Hills song Youth or something, you know, like let's like sneak a little Rita Springer in there, and then let's like, you know, Vineyard or, you know, just, just think about it, be smart about it, so. All right, well, I'm out of time. I hope that that was beneficial to you. And let's pray really quick, okay? God, I thank you for all these leaders in this room. I just pray for confidence and strength and patience, God, because sometimes the local church takes so much patience, but it is so rewarding. It's rewarding in our own lives, it's rewarding in our own hearts, and it's rewarding in the lives of others around us. So God, I just pray for patience to uh, serve in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Thank you guys.